Amen. Good morning, everybody. I have good news for you. This first Sunday of 2019, I want to declare to you that we have greater promise from God. Much better than any promise you can get from this world or anybody else. Promises are good. You get a promise, it gives you some kind of security of a future good, right? A promise, like an uncertain future. You have a promise, you have something to hold on to. The problem is, promises from this world, not very reliable. How many of you have experienced broken promises in your life? <sighs> All of us. So I, I, that's why this is good news. God, because God does not break his promise. Just let that sink to you right now. God does not ever break his promise. That's a good news. That's good news. So this is our theme this year, greater promise. Last year was greater devotion. This year is greater promise. We're going to explore the promises of God. And we're going to start out the year with a book study, right? Uh, last year, we did three book studies. We, we did a book study on Daniel. We did a book study on James. We did a book study on Habakkuk. How many of you are glad that we are learning the Bible, we are studying the Word of God, and letting, you know, this is one of our philosophies of preaching. We are not, we're not so much into topical sermons, because topical sermons, human mind come up with the topics, and then we're just trying to uh, get all kinds of scriptural backup for it. And we, we, our philosophy of preaching here in IFGF is that we want to just follow what... Um, 1 Timothy 4.13 says, Paul says to, to, to Timothy, make sure that when I come, you've done all these things. Number one, you, pre you, 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 you declare, you preach, you read, you declare the word of God. And number two, you teach the word of God. Meaning, the job of the church is nothing fancy. We're not a self-help uh, seminar kind of a thing. We're not trying to do that. We're not trying to be a TED Talk kind of a thing either. We're not trying to look smart. We have one job to do. We are here to proclaim the word and we explain what the word really means so that we do not interpret it wrongly. And then we experience the Holy Spirit illuminating that word, applying it into every single one of your life situation. Because if we make too, man, too much of an application, like this is how you handle this kind of a thing in your life, and then we come up with all the scriptures for it, what happens is it's, it'll apply to some people, but it will not apply to everyone. But if we preach the word, if we just explain the word of God, what it really means, the Holy Spirit will apply, help you apply it in your own situations in life. Amen. So we realize that doesn't make us look very relevant sometimes or very... Uh, uh, you know, uh, 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 on the edge of, uh, of entertainment or, or challenging uh, uh, talks or things like that. Well, not trying to. We just want to be faithful to the Word of God. And we hope that you will mature up in loving the Word of God and letting the Word of God lead your life. Amen? Amen? Is that okay? That's why we want to give you a good Balanced Diet, last year, 2018, we did three book studies. We did three theology series. We, 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 we spent seven weeks on soteriology, the doctrine of salvation. We spent another six weeks on uh, ecclesiology, the doctrine of the church. Then we spent another month or so on pneumatology, the doctrine of the Holy Spirit. This year, we probably will, will do a six or seven weeks on Christology or at least a month on Christology, talking about who Christ is. Uh, we, we, will, we will have all these things for you uh, in order for us to have everything we need to grow up in the Word of God. We're not trying to tell you what to do and how to gain, gain wisdom from our talks. We want you to go straight to the source, connect you with God, and God, through His Word, will give you the wisdom, will give you the guidance, will give you the convictions in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's where we're coming from, the philosophy of preaching that we have here. So this year, we're going to start out with a book study, and the book study is the book of Hebrews. Why? Because we did a word, 
word study, you, you know, we did a word study on the word promise because it's greater promise. And we found that here's, here's how, how many times the, the word promise appeared in the Bible. In the book of Luke, the book of Acts, Romans, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, 1 Timothy, 2, 2 Timothy, Hebrews, 2 Peter, 1 John. You can see that the book of Hebrews has the greatest number of the word promises. Another word for promise is, a, 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 even a weightier word for promise is covenant. Look at this. This is covenant. Oh, it didn't show up very strongly in this screen. But you see, this is Matthew, Mark, Luke, Acts, Romans, 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Hebrews, and Revelation. Do you see how, how, how much uh, the word covenant appeared in the book of Hebrews? Frankly speaking, the whole Bible, the word promise and covenant is mostly found in the book of Hebrews. So that's why we're going to... We're going to delve into the book of Hebrews this whole month because we, wanna, we want you to experience firsthand the promises of God that is for you, that is in your life. So that's why we, we go to the book of Hebrews. So we go to Hebrews, uh, and not because that's a, a scriptural uh, excuse for husbands to have to make coffee in the morning for their wives. But speaking of promises, <laughs> greater word, right? This is what we want to talk about today. Promises are powerful because they give us the assurance of a future good. I can't tell you what 2019 will hold for you, but I can tell you something. I can tell you that the promises of God will be there for you. See, the good news is this. The good news is that God has spoken. The good news is God has spoken. He is not yet to speak, may speak, maybe he will speak. No, no, he has already spoken. That means it's done. Settled. <laughs> Man, if I think about my future security in heaven, I cannot help but smile, no matter what is my situation. Because I know that I know that I know. My past, my present, my future, sins, mistakes, shortcomings has been paid in full. And it's a done deal. It's happened 2,000 years ago. He said, it is finished. It is indeed finished. I don't have to worry. Amen. That gives me security for future good. But not just that. He has spoken. His promises has been established. He has spoken. Isn't that important then then that we know what he speaks about so here's hebrew chapter one in the past god spoke for our and to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways but in these last days he has spoken to us by his son whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe just in case you're questioning his uh, qualifications by the way, he made the universe. All right? Why, why is that even mentioned? Why is this an issue? Listen, the, the, the book of Hebrews obviously was written to the Jews. Jews. Jewish believers, possibly a small house church in Rome by somebody. You know, one thing I'm excited about going to heaven is I'm going to finally find out who the writer of the book of Hebrews was. It was because it's not mentioned in the Bible. I, I'm, I'm dying to know who is this guy. The deepest insights he got about the priesthood of Christ and all. It's just amazing. The book of Hebrews is amazing. Talking about, the, about, about what Jesus did and how he became the high priest. Who is this guy? I'm going to find out one day in heaven. But it also reminded me that on this earth there's a lot of mysteries that we don't understand. Right? So I, I'm, I'm good with that. I, yeah, uh, John, was, John Mack was sharing with me this morning, like, he's been wondering about how heaven will be. Will, when Jesus comes back, will he, will he, will he be huge? Uh, <laughs> just stuff like, oh, yeah, I never thought about that, John. <laughs> it's like, yeah, I know he's coming again. I'm excited about his coming again. I'm excited about future, my future in heaven. I don't know quite the, all the details yet. I know it's going to be good. It's like trying to explain Disneyland to a four-year-old that has never been there. 
Right? It's got to be good. Just touch me. It's got to be great. The lines are super long. <laughs> That's the proof. <laughs> Thank God and heaven doesn't have those lines. But uh, listen, it's, there's a lot of mysteries here. But uh, among all those mysteries that we don't understand, that we don't know what's going on, a lot of things, a lot of things. We, we, I wish I can say 2019 is going to be smooth sailing, this and that, and, you know, pump you up with some good wishes and, you know. But in reality, we don't know. We don't know what's going to happen. We do not know everything just yet. And I don't want you to have empty promises. I mean, it's fine. You know, it's like a lot of people try to cheer people up and give uh, a you know, gung-ho kind of a thing. And, well, to be real, a lot of mysteries. However, there is the word of God that is not a mystery. And the writer of Hebrews was addressing a situation among the Jewish Christians. They were becoming more and more under pressure because at that time it was Nero's reign. Now, if you have, if you remember your history classes, he's just the worst of all the Roman emperors. He, he's, he's a sick person. Nero was a sadist. He, and he is ill. And he is doing all kinds of crazy stuff to Christians. And people are obviously discouraged. It does affect church growth. People are starting to, you know what, I think this Judaism thing, you know, it's kind of it's not bad. We're still worshiping God and we're, they're, 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 they're moving back into the comforts of Judaism and they're leaving the church. And the writer of Hebrews said, hey, wait a minute. He's addressing their historical understanding because in the Old Testament, the most important messengers, because God is unknowable, you see, his name is Y-H-W-H. Cannot even pronounce it, let alone understand him. The only way you know anything about God in the Old Testament is to his messengers, the angels. The angels are like the supreme, most, you know, admired servants of God that will tell you anything and everything that you ever need to know about God, about what God wants, and things like that. Because God never speaks directly to them. But now he's, the writer of Hebrews is saying, there's somebody much bigger than the angels. Trying to explain to them in terms that they would understand as Jewish believers. Now, I need to explain this because not many of you are uh, Old Testament Jewish people, right? So I'm explaining you the context of this whole thing. The context is, hey, careful who you're going to listen to. You better take heed, pay attention to this Jesus because he made the universe. By the way, do you understand? In the past, God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times in various ways. But in these last days, he's spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe. The message God has spoken to his son is complete forgiveness of sin. This is the message, folks. This is what Jesus has spoken. This is the good news that has been spoken over us. Number one, there is complete forgiveness of sin. It's not a conditional forgiveness of sin. It's not a partial uh, forgiveness of sin. It's complete. Don't let the devil ever tell you that, oh, Maybe you have not yet actually received Christ. Maybe you're not actually forgiven. Maybe you're... It, no, 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 no. He said it is finished. He said it is finished. You believe that. Just don't let go. It's a complete forgiveness of sin. That is a word of hope. It is also an unlimited access to God in times of need. That is the whole book of Hebrews. He, as the high priest, came into the Holy of Holies... Not bringing the blood of lamb or, or sacri other sacrifices. He brought his own blood so that he can come in once and for all. So that ever since that point, we have unlimited access to God in our times of need. We can always come boldly before the throne of grace to receive help in times of our needs. Amen. It has been spoken. It's done, folks. This is it. 
The same way when he said, let there be light and there was light, this is for you. You don't need to worry. Like, does this apply to me today? But I've done this today. No, no, no. You have unlimited access. Everybody say unlimited access. Unlimited. Said, say, I have unlimited access. To God in times of my need. Are you, are you, con are you convincing yourself? I hope you're convincing yourself. Because that, that sounds kind of weak, to be honest with you. But I will not judge by the volume of your voice, you know. Uh, but this is an amazing thing that he has spoken. It's a word of promise. And number three, he spoke about the hope for a future inheritance. I told you many times from First Peter, there is inheritance waiting in heaven for you. Hello? I mean, you, you're thinking of like heaven is great and all that, John, but it gets better. There's an inheritance waiting for you. It is kept there by the power of God through your faith. That's why this is a word of blessing. Pastor Steffi was talking about blessing. So we, we use that word so much, right? God bless you, God bless you. Even when I sneeze, somebody says, bless you. You know, it's like it becomes so mundane and it, we, we devalue that word. But do you realize how powerful that word is? Blessing. You can't live without the blessing of God on your life. I mean... It's just now when we had that communion, I was thinking like, man, two fish, five loaves of bread. The kid is not on carb diet. <laughs> but it fed 20,000 people. Do you, have you ever seen 20,000 people in one place? It's a lot. Dodger Stadium, is it 20,000? I think that... And maybe more than that. I think Jim is protesting. I think Dodger Stadium is 50,000, isn't it, Jim? Huh? 56,000, but it's never full anyway. So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> I didn't plan that. It was not in my notes. <laughs> but listen, 20,000 people is a lot of people. How do you feed 20,000 people? You know what happened? He took it and he blessed it. Can you even imagine what your business can be when Jesus took it and blessed it? Can you even fathom how different things will be if what you have, you give it to Jesus. Let him take it and let him bless it. It will multiply like nobody's business, man. You know, we like the blessing part, but we, don't, we usually don't like the, you know, Jesus took the bread and broke it, and he blessed it, right? We like the blessing part. We don't like the breaking part, right? We don't, we don't. It, it, it starts to dawn on me also. There has to be a letting go. There has to be a sacrifice component before something is blessable. Is your finances blessed by God? There needs to be a letting go. There needs to be a sacrificial component in order for any aspect of your life to become blessable. You know, every Sunday we, before, the, before the offering, we keep saying, well, we're not, we don't give to get, we don't give to get, we don't give to get. I get it, and it's important. Nobody's making deals with God. I'm going to give you this, and I'm expecting that. That's not our spirit at all. But sometimes we can get too far with that and, and, and completely have no expectations that God would bless, actually bless your finances. If you actually trust him and let go and sacrifice something to him. Not because you're trying to make a deal. But it's part of our worship. Worship is letting go of something and letting something break for the sake of God. And then you'll see him pick it up and bless it. And suddenly it's multiplied and it becomes miraculous. And it becomes blessing for so many people. Can you see that happening in your life? 
in your business, in your work, in your studies, in your relationships. Take it up. Give it to God. Let him bless you. It's powerful, the blessings of the Lord. The word of blessing is a hope for a future inheritance. Of course, our future inheritance is up there in heaven, not here. That's why the breaking thing, because when you br- allow your parts of your life to be broken, normally it's this case. You break it, you sacrifice it because you are choosing to let go something that is, that is in the world in order to gain something that is in heaven. That's what happened. That's why it breaks. But it's a good break because you're breaking from the world in order for the blessings of God to multiply it in order for you to have inheritance in heaven. Amen? So when you sacrifice your time to care for somebody, it might not give, give you any gains right here on earth, but you are, you are releasing an inheritance in heaven. When you give for the sake of missions and preaching the word elsewhere, it doesn't benefit us directly, but it brings souls that would otherwise never hear the gospel. That's a Eternal inheritance, a word of hope, a word of promise, and a word of blessing. And this has been spoken. It cannot be retracted. It is yours. Everybody say amen. Amen. The challenge is that there is competing voices, right? God has spoken, but then there is competing voices. So the voice of our circumstances, the voice of the cultural opinion, the voice of fear, the voice of politicians, the voice of all kinds of things, competing voices. Got to listen to the word of God in your life. Got to drown out the competition. Amen. Sometimes people go out of their way so far, whereas God has spoken so clearly so intently. I mean, God, the steps of the righteous are ordered by the Lord. That means he direct your path. It's not coincidence you're here in this church. That means the word of God spoken here is for you. It's not a coincidence. You praise God for the spouse that you have. He is a gift from God. She is a gift from God. Well, Maybe it's time to listen to them. It dawned on me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm kind of late in this thing. 31 years of marriage, you know. But probably two weeks ago, it, it dawned on me. You know what? I, 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 it's, I never had a doubt. My wife is a godly woman. Otherwise, we would not have been married, right? I mean, impossible. I, this is a godly woman, a gift from God. Why, cannot, why can't I expect that God will speak to my life, to my wife? Because she's there all the time and she talk, uh, I was going to say talk all the time, but I better not say that. <laughs> but, but what I mean is you take that for granted just because it's so accessible, available, and it's so abundant. I'm, I'm, I'm having this feeling that I'm going to get in trouble <laughs> already. <laughs> when something is available, somehow you take it for granted. Every Sunday he's preaching. Every day she's talking. <laughs> Every day your parents are talking to you. You get tired, your parents talking to you all the time. And you start dismissing that and you forgot that in there somewhere is the word of God for you. Now, I'm not saying that every single thing that I speak to my wife would be the word of God. I would like to think that, but I know it's not. That's why God gives you the Holy Spirit to understand which one is which. But to throw the baby out with the bathwater would be a big mistake. God already arranged the things in your life in order to speak to you. Amen. God wants to speak to you. And he puts a lot of things around you for that purpose. So, 
The challenge is that there are a lot of competing voices. You need to make a choice, a conscious choice. I'm not going to conveniently follow other voices because I know what's good for me. I have to follow the voice of the Son. Because here's one thing to consider. The Son is a far superior, is far superior than angels. See, a large portion of Hebrews chapter 1 is the author convincing his audience that Jesus is greater than the prophets. Jesus is greater than the angels. I think I can convince you about that. It may be easier because of the lack of the cultural baggage that they are carrying. You don't have. So, but this is, this, is, this is what it says here, verse 3. The sun is the radiance of God's glory and the exact representation of his being. Sustaining all things by his powerful word. After he had provided purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So here are the four things to understand about the sun. Number one, he's the radiance of God's glory. We see very powerfully the connection between the father and the son here. I think number one and number two is kind of saying the same thing. Our understanding of the Trinity is being reinforced here in passages like this because Jesus is more than a son. He is the father's exact representation. He is the radiance of God's glory. Glory. That's what it says. Look, don't, don't take him for granted. Don't, 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 don't make light of him. This is serious. Jesus said, you have seen me. You've seen the Father. Amen. We cannot separate one from the other. The Son is the exact imprint of God's being. He's the radiance coming from the Father. <coughs> Number three here, he sustains all things by his powerful word. We are assured that God is knowable. Praise God we are in the New Testament now. God is knowable. Not fully, but knowable. This is a greater revelation that we, than we had with the, just the prophets. We will have a better, deeper revelation of who God is from Jesus rather than from the prophets. Right? This is what it's saying. And God is no longer shrouded in mystery and smoke on the mount where the law is given. He is now noble in the person of the Son. Jesus, through whom God is speaking to us. The Son existed prior to creation. As a matter of fact, John chapter 1 says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God. And the word was God. Talking about Jesus. Amen. The son is God. And God is the son. And then the fourth one here is the, 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 the task of the son. Which he has completed. What is the task? Listen again here. He provided for purification from sins. And then sat down at the right hand of the majesty in heaven. So the task was purification for sins. That's his task. You think he, he's going to be successful? Do you think he can handle that job? Given it's you he's dealing with? Yes, he can. Hello? He is the one that made the universe. If anything, I, I want you to I, want to, I want to implore you. You are not too tough for Jesus. He will, he will purify you. Amen. He's going to be successful. In purifying you. Praise God. Amen. Sometimes I doubt it about myself. But when I read this, yeah, Jesus, you're going to win. Because you're bigger than me. Amen. Amen. Come on. This is a huge, deep theological truth. But it's, an, it's, it's powerful. He did that. His task was redemptive in nature to provide for the purification for sins. Not his sins, but for the sins of humanity. It's been finished. It's done. It's a completed task. And to stress that he has completed the task, to emphasize that indeed it's done, you know what he did? He sat down at the right hand of the Father just to say, yo, I'm done. 
Amen. Woo. And that's an intrig intriguing verse also. Verse 4. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. For to which of... Okay, let me stop there before I go on. So he became as much superior to the angels as the name he has inherited is superior to theirs. When you read that sentence, he became more superior than the angels. Is there then a time that he was not superior than the angels? Well, in the beginning, he's definitely superior than the angels. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God. The word was God. He created everything. Nothing was created that was not through him. But this talks about became more superior. Could there be a moment in between these two points in history that he became lower than the angels? Huh? Yeah. In Psalms it says he made you a little lower than the angels. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that verse. And plus, here's um, uh, let me let me find my notes here. I'm getting ahead of myself. And I, but, but, okay, here it is. The, 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 the verse says this. The verse says this. He emptied himself. He did not look upon his righteousness as something to be grasped. But instead, he emptied himself and became like us. Oh, that's the time when he became lower than the angels. So do you realize how significant it is that we are now, you know, from this point, we passed this point, and now we are in this point where he now has ascended on high, he overcome, and he now become more amazingly, more powerful than the angels just for us. Just to give us this newest, latest edition of God's promise for all of us. He went through all that for us. Just to make sure he can say, you are more than a conqueror. Why can he say that? Because he conquered. Over here, he was God. Didn't conquer anything. Nothing to be conquered. He went down here. He conquered. Now, <laughs> he's more powerful than ever. Now, he gives you the promise. You are more than conqueror. Even though 2000, I cannot promise you 2019 will be trouble free, but I can promise you with every trouble, you're going to be able to conquer it. Amen. 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 That's the word of God. He has spoken. It's amazing. Second Peter 1, 2, just to illustrate this. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Okay. Only for Christians, right? As his divine power has given to us, what? All things that pertain to life and godliness. What are you going to have in 2019? Life. Is that, are you going to have a godly life this 2019? I tell you, all that you'll ever need pertaining to life and godliness, you have. If you... If you, if you know Jesus, you believe in his power, you have accepted him as your Lord, you lack nothing. You lack nothing. You don't need a fancier sermon. You don't need a podcast from somebody. You don't need other things. You have everything you need pertaining to life and godliness in 2019. Through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises. Hold on to that promise. What promise? I just told you. And through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. Hey, that sounds exciting to me. I want to experience this in 2019. To be a partaker of His divine nature. Because I, frankly speaking, I'm kind of tired of the earthly Dan not so cool 
I would like to participate more in His divine nature in 2019. Can I hear an amen? amen? Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. How about that? Escaping all the problems we've been entangled to because of our lust. We don't talk about it. We don't admit it. We don't confess it. But it's there and it's causing all kinds of problems in our lives. We have a promise that we can escape it. I'm excited about that. So, in 2019, we need to exercise selective hearing. Meaning, choose who you're going to listen to. Don't listen to fear. Don't listen to the world. Don't listen to things that are not from the Lord. Amen. Choose. That's the power you have that you must exercise. Choose wisely. Exercise selective hearing. Hebrews 1.13, to which of the angels did God ever say, sit at my right hand until I make your enemies a footstool for your feet? Of course, nobody, none. Are not all angels ministering spirits sent to serve those who will inherit salvation? You see, angels are lower uh, than him. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard so that we do not drift away. For since the message spoken to the angels were binding and every violation and disobedience received, it's just punishment. How shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? That's what I want to tell you today. Selective hearing, important. Choose who you're going to hear. Because if the angels, when they're given a charge and they missed it, they got such severe punishment. Angels! How can we escape if we ignore something that is greater than the angels? The Son of God, the gospel of Jesus Christ is far greater than any message prophets or angels have ever spoken. If they ignoring that got into big trouble, how about us? The author of Hebrews is warning us, don't take this for granted. Pay attention to what the Son has said it's for your own good this salvation which was first announced by the Lord was confirmed to us by those who heard him God also testified to it by signs wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will so but pay attention to the truth that you have heard pay attention don't drift away there's too much at stake for us to ignore God's word. We need to exercise selective hearing. So typically selective hearing is not considered a good thing. But in this case, it's very essential. We need to ignore the voices that distract us from God. And listen to the only voice that matters. The voice that brings salvation. Amen. We need to identify and ignore the competing voices. So we can pay attention to God's voice. When a thought comes to your mind. You know, evaluate, evaluate. Does this voice point me to God's truth or something else? Does this voice encourage me to put my hope in Jesus or something else? Does this voice sound like Jesus or someone else? Anything that does not inspire faith in Christ need to be ignored. Amen. So that we can pay attention to what we've heard from God. So selective hearing is go straight to the source. Reading books is great. Listening to podcasts are great. Following somebody's blog is great. You can do all that. Listening to sermons is great. But at the end of the day, you must go straight to the source. You must love the word. I can't do it for you. Only you can do it for yourself. You must respect and honor the word of God yourself. It contains the eternal promises of God. It's all for your own good. Amen. So you want to receive the greater promises of God? I just told you. It's entirely not only possible, 
It's right there for you. Go after it. Go for it. Amen.